Let's look at the pressure the Chancellor's under then with uh, Ralf Stegner, who is a, a member of the German Parliament and a former Deputy Chairman of the Chancellor's Social Democrat Party. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, is Germany really doing everything it can to provide Ukraine with military assistance? Well, I think we do, and uh, most importantly, we uh, discuss that with our allies. There's no uh, lonely decision by the German government, but there's a very close talks with our allies uh, in Europe and uh, with the United States as well. And as far as I know, everything is agreed upon as far as the sanctions go, as far as the military help is going, as far as economic aid is going, humanitarian aid is going. And Germany is doing a lot uh, in trying to help Ukraine as best as we can. But there is, of course, a discussion how this war can be ended uh, as soon as possible. And there you have different opinions on that, not only in the German public, but also uh, in the media and, and elsewhere. OK. But on that point about uh, German assistance, the Ukrainian ambassador here in Germany does seem to think differently. We'll hear from him and then come back to you. Yeah, the problem is that these the problem is that this list we got from the federal government a few weeks ago doesn't contain any heavy weapons at all. So we don't know what we can order for this 1 billion euro that has been announced, because the weapons we need are just not on the list. So, Ralf Stegner, why does it seem that Germany is reluctant to give Ukraine what Ukraine says it needs? Well, I don't know whether this is really true. Uh, it's hard for me to criticise the Let Ukraine me just interrupt you there. Let me, just, let, let me just stop you there, just so we're clear about what you're saying. The Ukrainian, the Ukrainian ambassador says, what we need is not on the list. You're saying that's not true. I don't know whether it's true. But we have well, why seen not, in the past. Why not that take things what that he are, says? Let, let me tell value. you that. We have seen in the past, excuse me, ask questions, I try to answer them. Um, we have seen in the past that the things that have been publicly said and things that have been agreed upon with the Ukrainian government are different. I know that uh, our chancellor and our government is very in very close uh, talks with the allies, that we give Ukraine whatever we can, what works, what is there and uh, that we uh, at least uh, uh, see that the money is given for that so it can be bought elsewhere and that we want to see it come to the Ukraine as fast as possible. That's what what's, I know about the talks between the heads of government. And, and therefore, I don't want to have the discussion with the ambassador in public, but rather saying whatever we can do, we will. But of course, there's a difference in opinion um, whether we should uh, send heavy weapons or not. And one of the obligations our chancellor has, and the other heads of state as well, is keeping NATO out of the conflict. And that's one of the problems we have to deal with. But it, when it comes to heavy weapons, that's not the reason the chancellor gives. The, the, the chancellor has not said we won't send Ukraine heavy weapons because that will embroil NATO in a war. He said we won't send them heavy weapons because it takes too long uh, to train them and they don't know how to use them. That's why I said uh, weapons are sent that can be used and that are there and they are functioning uh, because we don't talk about symbol politics, but rather things that help. And therefore, that's uh, what we are talking about with our allies. And for instance, there will be sent weapons from the Eastern European states, members of NATO, and they can, will uh, get uh, help uh, from Germany and others. So. Sometimes the ways are different, maybe, but we try to do everything we can to support the Ukraine. You keep saying that. I'm confused because you've just told me that um, as far as heavy weapons uh, goes, the, the Ukrainians that will not be able to use them. But the Ukrainians say, send us tanks, but you're saying we can't send you tanks because you, you won't know how to, to use them. Who is better placed to know uh, what they need, you or Germany or the Ukrainians? Excuse me, I'm not a military expert, but I tell you uh, that there is a very close agreement between the allies with the United States, with France and others, that we send weapons that can be used, that are useful, that they're functioning, and they can go there as fast as possible, and there is complete agreement. So there's no need to attack Germany here because there's no uh, 
lonely German position on that, but rather um, the efforts to do whatever we can in common uh, action with our allies to help the Ukraine as best as possible with the weapons that are there or can be uh, sent as soon as possible. Let's talk about um, uh, Germany's dependence on, on Russian uh, gas, uh, because uh, one of the accusations from uh, Ukraine, of course, is that, that Germany, amongst lots of other countries, uh, is funding uh, Russia's war in Ukraine because uh, every day it's sending uh, millions of euros uh, to Russia. Um, what needs to happen to make sure that Germany stops putting its economy first? Well, the point is that sanctions have to be um, done in a way that punish the other side more than the own. And of course, we are part of the sanction system. Again, we do that together with our allies. Everything's agreed upon commonly. And uh, with, with coal and oil, we have done that so far. And with gas, we'll do it as fast as possible. It won't be and wouldn't be reasonable or responsible uh, to uh, have a, a real big crisis in our industry with uh, mass uh, unemployment and other things. But we do that as fast as possible. That's what we're saying. That's what we're doing. And um, I don't see a sense in, in, in really public conflicts with the Ukraine since we are really the country that supports Ukraine on every measure we can, financially, humanitarian, with military means and with the sanctions, strongest sanctions that have ever been put on our country at all. Uh, and all that together with our American friends and the European partners. And therefore, uh, I don't see a sense in, 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 in uh, public battling with the Ukraine. We try to support them. Uh, Understood. Uh, but the, the picture you've painted there is one of but, unity. You said that everyone is, is agreed on common goals uh, uh, as far as sanctions goes. But it is clear that Germany is holding back efforts to restrict supplies of, of Russian gas uh, into Europe. That Those efforts are being hampered by Germany's concerns about its economy. That's true, isn't it? Well, I don't know whether you're part of the talks with the European leaders. I, I can only say that the end of the discussion, and there are different points of views, not only by Germany, but other countries as well, with other points, what is done in the end is a common effort. And that I don't see that there is a conflict between our allies in the contrary. It's a very close, common uh, action in terms of trying everything we can to stop the war and to punish Putin and to isolate him and to help uh, the Ukrainians. And uh, I know there's public discussion. A lot of people give interviews, but they are not part of the talks of the, the leaders of the states. And therefore, I can only take the information I have. And as far as I know, it's common action. There is no conflict within the uh, alliance. And we try everything we can. But of course, the interests are, are different. Um, some countries are more dependent on gas, others have more dependency in other uh, directions. Uh, that's the nature of the, um, of the facts. But um, still, we are working much closer together than we have ever had. Uh, if you think about what has been said about the alliance by Macron earlier on or other people. OK, thank you so much for joining us and uh, outlining that so clearly. Uh, Ralf Stegner, uh, a member of the German parliament for the Social Democrats. Thank you.